This is frontal bone. It is pneumatic flat bone. Pneumo means air. This bone possesses air sinus, frontal air sinus here. So it is called pneumatic flat bone. If you are asked, give an another example of pneumatic bone. The another example will be maxilla or maxillary bone. It contains maxillary air sinus. Then come to the frontal bone. This bone possesses three parts. One is squamous part, this upper part, nasal part, and third part is the orbital part. This is orbital part. So squamous part above, the nasal part, and this orbital part. Orbital part having two plates, one right and left to orbital plate. Then how to hold the bone in anatomical position? You have to hold the bone in such a way so that the expanded part or squamous part it is directed upwards and the orbital plate having two surface this is orbital surface facing towards the orbit this is orbit so this is the frontal bone so this surface is the orbital surface so orbital surface facing downwards and this concavity of the squamous part looking backwards and the apex of the two borders this one it is directed upwards so hold the bone in this way this is the anatomical position of frontal bone let's discuss the squamous part first this is squamous part it is having two surfaces anterior surface or convex surface and posterior surface or concave surface also called the cerebral surface this is supra orbital margin on both sides the supra orbital margin it is the partition or junction between the orbital plate or orbital surface and the squamous part the supra orbital margin is concave on both sides and it is having two parts on the medial part it is rounded it is one third and lateral two third it is sharp at the junction of lateral two third and medial one third on this margin just above the margin there is a notch or foramen called supra orbital foramen it is not prominent in this bone if you see yes this is supra orbital foramen this one but on this side the foramen is replaced by a notch supra orbital notch but here in this in this bone you can see the supra orbital foramen are present on both sides what are the structures passing through the supra orbital foramen the important structures are the supra orbital vessels and supra orbital larvas then another notch is there and this notch is called a supra trochlear notch but this notch not prominent and the structure close to the supra trochlear notch is the supra trochlear vessels and nerve remember that the supra trochlear and supra orbital nerves they are the branches of the frontal division of ophthalmic nerve ophthalmic nerve again it is one of the branches of the trigeminal nerve trigeminal nerve having three branches ophthalmic maxillary mandibular the ophthalmic division divides into frontal lacrimal and mesociliary and frontal division again divides into supra trochlear and supra orbital nerves but the supra trochlear and supra orbital vessels or arteries they are the branches from the ophthalmic artery which is again a branch of internal carotid artery then come to the another margin another prominence over the supra orbital margin this is a round elevation on the external surface and this margin is called the superciliary arch and if i show you here it is more prominent this is superciliary arch the superciliary arch the mid in the midline here 
it is called the glabella this muscularly arch is it is more prominent in males because it due to the size of the frontal sinus which is present deep to this supraciliary arch glabella is here glabella means it is the meeting point of the supraciliary arch of both sides so it is an anatomical landmark of the frontal bone located superior to the nasia if you are asked what is the meaning of the term glabella it means hairless or glabrous glabella is hairless hair and smooth area between the two eyebrows and the elevation a rounded elevation on the external surface which is about approximately 3 cm above the midpoint of the supraorbital margin it is called frontal eminence or frontal tuber or frontal tubercity and this frontal tubercity or frontal tuber it is more prominent in young individuals and also in females but the supraciliary arch it is more prominent in males and the ossification starts from the frontal eminence then come to the external surface here it is smooth and here you will see the frontal belly of occipital frontalis and here is the epicanial aponeurysis if you go to the lateral side the supraorbital margin here there is a process called the jagamadi process of frontal bowl similarly there is a another process called frontal process of jagamadi bone so if you see here the jagamadi process of frontal bone articulates with the frontal process of jagamadi bone this is jagamadi bone so it is a fronto jagamadi suture here this one fronto jagamadi suture and laterally with this process it ends in a rough triangular area here this one and on this side also rough triangular area this articulates with the greater wing of sphenoid i am showing you the sphenoid this is sphenoid bone and this is greater wing of sphenoid can you see this rough surface here is a rough surface both are triangular so it is a articulation there is a line here which is going backwards and upwards from this jagamantic process this line is called the temporal line there are two temporal lines superior and inferior temporal line so this is temporal surface so all together there are three surface of the squamous part of temporal bone external surface then internal surface then temporal surface here you will get the temporal fossa and temporalis nasal of both sides then come to the inner side here there are some depression or phobia and these are the for impressions of the acrid granulation and some impressions for the frontal lobe of the cerebrum and there are some groups called the vascular markings and here is a crest called the frontal crest which bifurcates here forming a group or sulcus which lodges the superior sagittal sinus and the margin of the sulcus and the frontal crest gives attachment to fork cerebri and here there is a foramen and this foramen is not present only in the frontal bone this foramen is, is formed by articulation with the ethmoid bone this is ethmoid bone in the upper surface of the cribriform plate here the cribriform in appearance and this is called this projection called crista galli the crista galli of ethmoid bone anteriorly forming a notch by the two ala this notch it articulates with this notch of the frontal bone here so the if you see from this side you will see there is a foramen will be formed between the crista galli of ethmoid bone and the notch here of the frontal bone so these two notch form a foramen called foramen cecum so foramen cecum it is in between crista galli of ethmoid bone and the frontal crest usually no structure passes through the foramen cecum because it is a blind foramen in most of the cases but sometimes it transmits an emissary vein which joins the veins of the nose with the superior sagittal sinus 
then come to the other parts this is nasal part which part is nasal part it is a part in between the supra orbital margin then what is nasal notch the nasal notch is here it is a serrated margin the lower part or lower margin of the nasal part called nasal notch then what is nasal spine nasal spine is from the posterior border of the nasal notch there is a projection called nasal spine what are the structures or what are the bones articulates with this nasal notch this is nasal notch from lateral to medial this is lacrimal bone so frontal process of lacrimal air then this is maxilla so this is frontal process of maxilla and this is nasal bone so if you remember in this way l m n from lateral to medial lacrimal maxilla and nasal bone they articulate with the nasal notch of this side and also nasal notch of this side then what are the structural differences uh, between the orbital part and the rest of the frontal bone in the orbital part there is no intervening diploid tissue it is it is entirely compact bone but the other parts you will get two tables of compact compact bone with intervening spongy tissue and there two important uh, feature we find in the orbital surface laterally here there is a depression the shallow depression at the anterolateral part of the orbital surface if i hold it so anterolateral part this depression called the lacrimal fossa the lacrimal fossa it contains the or lodges the orbital part of the lacrimal gland and on the medial side here on this orbital surface there is a notch or a fovea or a spine that uh, fovea or spine is called the trochlear spine or trochlear notch it is also a depression or a spine below and behind the medial part of the supraorbital margin on its anterior medial aspect of the orbital surface here what is its importance because this spine it is attached with a fibrocartilaginous pulley through which glides the superior oblique muscle of the eyeball this is its importance for this notch this notch is called the ethmoidal notch it is a quadrilateral gap between two orbital plates how this gap is closed in the articulated skull if you see the articulated skull this is it is broken here it is gap is closed by the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone ethmoid bone it fills the gap in this way if you see the margin here in the in the margin there are presence of incomplete sinuses called ethmoidal sinuses and also presence of two transverse grooves when it articulates with this ethmoid bone the incomplete ethmoidal sinuses become complete ethmoidal sinus and the grooves become anterior and posterior ethmoidal grooves and anterior and posterior ethmoidal group contains the anterior and posterior ethmoidal vessels and nerve what are the fates of this ethmoidal layer sinus the ethmoidal layer sinus they open into the middle meters and superior meters of the nose the anterior and middle ethmoidal layer sinuses they drain into middle meters of the nose and posterior ethmoidal layer sinus they drain into the superior meters of the nose a frontal layer sinus it is here deep to the super ciliary arch this frontal layer sinus are two in number one on each side and they are separated by a bony septum which usually deviates to one side so the both the uh, frontal layer sinus are not equal in size angular in shape and its dimension is about 3.2 into 2.6 into 1.8 cm in case of adults and usually more prominent in males and this frontal layer sinus 
they drain into the usually in the middle meters of the nose through the frontonasal duct and sometimes the frontal bone during development it is having two halves and then it unites but if it remains forming a suture this is called metopic suture which is found in this bone this is metopic suture but it is not present in other bones you see there is no such suture here and also no such suture in other frontal bone this is the anatomical position of frontal bone